Mike Lodge. It, I am the business advisor, and we are going to talk about several different things this morning. And you know I only have 15 minutes for this podcast, so I'm going to have to go fast. Um, listen, I'm getting kind of perturbed with Donald Trump, and now it looks like Steve Bannon and everybody are ganging up and starting to call names on Elon Musk. Why? Why is that necessary? If you want to lose an election, be real stupid and start calling people names. These names and these indirendos and all this other nonsense and, and putting down Elon Musk for not buying Twitter is not going to help the Republican Party at all. In fact, it makes you look really stupid. I mean, you are going to the far right and acting really stupid, just like the far left acts really stupid and start saying really dumb things. So listen, Trump, I'm talking to you. Listen up your ears now, because I'm pissed off. Stop putting down people. Start focusing on what the needs of America are and focus on it and talk about it and drive it. But stop putting down other people. There's no need for it. It makes you look like a fool. It makes you look petty. It makes you look like a child out on the, uh, a mean child out on the playground being the bully. I, it doesn't do you any good. But when you talk about the issues and when you focus on the issues, that makes you sound like a leader. But putting down Elon Musk and other people, it doesn't do any good. So stop it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Gosh, if you really want to lose this election for the Republicans, keep acting stupid like this because you, it's just absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. We have an economy that is failing at the moment because we don't have leadership. If you want to lead, come up with some really good ideas on how to beat this inflation and how to get us back on track. Talk about that because that's what we want to hear about. But we don't want to hear you going on social media and in your speeches and everything else. And now you got Steve Bannon on the wagon. It's absolutely ridiculous. You've got to stop it. Because you're acting like a bully out in the playground, and it doesn't look good for the Republican Party. And you are supposed to be the leader of the Republican Party, but you're not acting like it when you do stuff like this. So I'm kind of pissed off at you. Now, I need to talk about this inflation. Now, as we all know, we've been in this inflationary time for a long time. I mean, it's been there for a long time. And we in small business have been talking about it. We've been moaning about it. We have been trying to talk to our leaders about it, but no one pays attention to us. No, there's no inflation. So we have a, a problem, and that is if the Federal Reserve had acted months and months ago, we would not be in the situation we're at now. They could have curbed inflation by acting quickly on, on interest rates. They could have done it. But they waited, and they waited, and they waited until all Americans were suffering. Every single one of us was suffering. And what did they do? They just sat there and did nothing. Oh, no, there's no inflation. Well, maybe there's inflation. Oh, well, there is inflation. And we might get into a recession. Severe recession needed to cool inflation. That is what a Bank of America analyst is saying at the moment on the Federal Reserve. Now, this should have been done months ago. This inaction by the Federal Reserve, inaction from the White House, inaction from Congress on curbing spending has created this inflationary time that has now led into recession. My friends, we are in a recession. I keep saying that, and I will say it every single day. So this article says the hottest inflation in four decades will force the Federal Reserve to take such extreme actions to tame prices and policymakers advertently drag the U.S. economy into a deep recession, according to Bank of America analysts. In a Friday note, the bank strategist said market pricing suggests inflation will fall to or below the Fed's 2% target within the next two years, but that a major economic downturn is needed in order to for that to happen. It seems to be forgotten here is that inflation is a sticky, slow-moving variable. Now, this could have been averted. It could have been. 
But what happens is that they just stalled and stalled and stalled. Now we are faced with a deep recession, and it started several months ago. This recessionary time started months ago. We They keep wanting to call it inflation, but inflation keeps getting worse and worse and worse. New numbers are coming out this week. I'm going to be amazed to see what it is. That 8.5 or 8 point whatever percentage we're at, we are not at that. We're, we are more at 16%. If you take all the variables of inflation and add them together, we are much higher than that 8.5%. And we have got to get rid of it. And the Federal Reserve and the White House could have done more at the very beginning instead of denying there was any inflation. When you deny, things get worse. And that's what happened. And we're living through it right now. This is going to be the worst recession we have ever, ever dealt with. And I've been saying it for a long time, and other small businesses have been saying it for a long time. Listen, we at the small business level, we feel it much more than the bigger guys. On Wall Street, that's a totally, totally different uh, economy. I said this in in yesterday's podcast. Wall Street is a different economy, and it's not part of us, except in our 401k plans. But it's not us. We're the ones that have to foot the higher bills for food and make the tough decisions on what to buy, when to buy it, how much we can buy. We're the ones that that are looking at our gas tanks and thinking, gosh, I hope that I don't have to fill it up this week because it's so much. Even in our travel costs, my gosh, we are going bonkers on our travel. The expense for me to get from the East Coast to the West Coast is three times as much as it was before. I was trying to plan a trip to to Greece with a friend, and I'm looking at the cost, the hotel costs, And now they're charging, uh, in a lot of these locations internationally, they're charging for Wi-Fi. They're charging for extra food. They're charging for uh, cleaning your rooms. I mean, it's, it's adding up. It's a crazy time to even think about traveling. But we have had to face that, and now it's an international, global situation. By the way, um, if you look down at the link, uh, the links in this story, I have put an article in there, and... It's, it's really interesting to look at. Oh, before I go there, but let me finish up on this uh, recession. So for you out there who are in this tough times at the moment financially, now we have to take every single dollar and make sure it counts. Some of us are going to have to get two jobs or gigs or whatever you want to call it <laughs> to be able to make ends meet. Our expenses are much higher than the income that's coming in at the moment. We are in an upside-down economic situation where our expenses are more than the income coming in. We are upside-down. And you and I have to do a better job at making sure that our money stretches. We are going to become the stretch economy. That's what we're going to be. Anyway, I have put an an article in... uh, the link down below and it's really cool to look at if you want to look at and see exactly who are the big players in the economy and it's called the 100 trillion global economy in one chart and what it does it takes all of the countries in the world and shows what their how they play in the economy uh, throughout the world and it's it's really really fascinating to look at it because it's you know, we always think about the United States economy, but who's beating us out there? And to me, it looks like China is right up there with us. They're just about ready to take over if they haven't already. But that's because we have had bad policies from the United States government. We have not been tough enough on China. China has always been a problem. I have been dealing with China for many, many, many years in Mainland China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. And as you deal with that economic structure over there, there are some things that you don't even want to know about because it just it will stifle your mind because 
of the deals that you have to make behind the scenes with all of these government officials and everything else. It is a dirty business in dealing with China. And it always has been. They have always controlled the Silk Road. And when they control that, they control the world's economy. And as they begin to spread out from China and, to, and being uh, able to create islands of military structures, they're going to protect that, that uh, Silk Road. And that's a costly Silk Road because that's where oil flows, that's where goods flow through, that's where um, the economies are growing in, for China. Not for the U.S., for China. Because once they control those waterways, and once they control the land and the sea and, and uh, transportation, they control the Silk Road. And every single American should be worried about that because that is what got us into this situation with, with the pandemic, not being able to get supplies out of the Silk Road and those roads being shut down on medical supplies. It was a very well-planned-out strategy that the Chinese had. That's why more and more products that deal with health care should be done here in the United States, not in foreign nations. Yes, you get lower costs of production. I know, I've set them up over there. But you also have the situation where a country can hold you hostage. And that's, that is what we have seen. We cannot be held hostage when it comes to health care. So all of these medical products need to be shifted over from China over into the United States just to protect our assets. Just like our fuel, our fuel supplies should all be shifted back into the United States so that we can control the pricing of it, the production of it, and the quality of it. When you're taking stuff out of other countries like Saudi Arabia, you have to worry about what is the quality of that oil. I, was, I saw an article this morning, which I put it also uh, in my link, where Mexico, you know, the, uh, Biden had a meeting with Mexico president yesterday, and it was not very pretty. It was ugly. And one of the things that he is now doing, the president of Mexico, is allowing Americans at the border countries to come across over into Mexico to get a cheaper price of gas. That's always been the case. Mexico has always, always had a cheaper price. A price on on gasoline. So I, Americans in San Diego used to drive over into Tijuana and fill up, and then come back come back into the to the United States. So he's allowed Americans to do that because he's subsidizing the oil down there. So prices are much lower than they are in the United States. So if you want cheap gas, hop over across the border. I wonder what they would call that. Not illegal aliens, but gasoline aliens, I guess. I guess gasoline aliens can now go across the border. <laughs> okay, that's it for the day. I've had it. So, Trump, get wise, okay? Because I'm watching you, and the American people are watching you, and they're listening to you. And the more that you pounce upon people, the more that you're going to lose this race. So, stop it. Stop acting like an idiot. Because pretty soon no one wants to touch you because you are not sounding like a leader anymore. If you want to have more uh, contact with me or if you want to have more uh, uh, of my blogs and my podcasts that I do every single day, go to www.lodge-co.com. You can listen to my podcast. You can see my pa. You can see my blogs. You can go to my uh buymeacoffee.com account where I post all my blogs that have all to do with business. Let's go out and have a great day, guys. We are going to do something great. <laughs>